Jay Campbell, the technical trainer here at IVIX North America. Today I want to go over some tips and tricks as well as some frequently asked questions to make sure that your IVIX system is working efficiently on the job site. Let's get started. So we get asked this question quite often and the simple answer is you will not see the gauge move until you have the trigger pulled on the gun. Before operating the gun, make sure the first thing that you do is turn your pressure regulator to its lowest position, all the way counterclockwise. There will be a stopping point, so you'll know that it's in its lowest position. Now that the pressure regulator is set to its lowest position and there's air supplied to the unit, the first thing that you want to do to engage the gun is put your thumb on the black safety button. This is our dead man switch. You will not be able to pull the trigger on the gun until you have that black button pushed in. So when you see something like this happen, typically you'll notice that when you pull the trigger, the material will come out of the gun, then after about two to three seconds, the material goes away. As you let off the trigger, as the system's depressurizing, you probably notice that the material comes back out of the gun very lightly, very gently. Uh, that right there is the number one indication that there's been a clog in the abrasive valve. Now just to give you a little further insight as to why that's happening, I have an Easy Blast 25 set up right here. I just wanna talk about why it's being congested right there at the abrasive valve. As you can see here, we have our pressure regulator that has a 90 degree elbow fitting. Right between where it says Easy Blast, this rod here and that elbow fitting, these tanks have their own independent chamber, the air chamber, where the air is actually flowing through that chamber and it's meeting right there at the block. You need a 10 millimeter socket to remove those four nuts. Now you can see that first hole right here, that is where the air is flowing through that independent chamber, and this is where your material is feeding into the block. So the air and the material are meeting right here within this block itself. So basically what's happening is, if you have a compressor that's producing quite a bit of moisture, that moisture is gonna travel into this block and it's gonna meet with the abrasive and it's gonna cake up either right here in the bottom plate or right there where you can actually meter and control the amount of material that you're using. So if you're dealing with a lot of clumping and congestion due to a compressor which may be producing a lot of moisture, uh, we do recommend to open up the moisture separators that are on the back of the units. Every moisture separator that's attached to the machine will have a release valve at the bottom of the moisture cup that you can crack open about halfway to release any moisture as it's being collected in the cup. Or you can add an additional moisture separator to the compressor or the machine itself. So to clean out the abrasive valve, if you do see any congestion, we do have a video on YouTube. You just go to YouTube and type in IBIX USA. We have a how-to maintenance guide that will show you how to thoroughly clean through that system and abrasive valve. So if you've read through the manual, you probably noticed on one of the first pages, it tells you to not overfill the unit. If you do overfill the system, thankfully, it's a very easy fix. What you'll notice is, you'll probably see a lot of material or a stream of material coming out of this exhaust hose here. What's happening is, if you overfill the unit, the air going into the unit is gonna have a hard time getting above all of that material and pushing it all the way through that abrasive valve and 20 to 30 foot hose. So it has no other place to go other than back up that chamber and right out that hose. So if you do notice that there's material coming out of that exhaust hose, number one indication, the machine's been overfilled. What you wanna do is, if you're using one of the smaller Pro 9 systems, just take an empty bucket, turn it upside down, empty out the machine, go ahead and open up the abrasive valve as well. And once you have the machine empty of any kind of material, just run the machine for about a minute or two with the trigger pulled on the gun to make sure that you're purging that line and getting rid of anything that might be still within that area of the hose or the abrasive valve. If it is a little bit more extensive, let's say if you've used baking soda, baking soda, it's a great product. It does tend to kind of stick to any kind of surface if it does get any kind of moisture to it. So if it does back up into the pressure regulator and jam it in the sense of you, you, know, you won't be able to regulate the pressure, um, you will have to clean that out. And we do again have a maintenance video on how to clean out that pressure regulator pretty thoroughly on YouTube as well. So once you've done that and you've emptied the pot of material, you've purged the line, 
go ahead and refill the machine and try to leave about two to three inches of space from the top. That way the air can work its way above the material and push it down through that hose. So if you notice that the gun is continuously firing, even if you let off the trigger, we usually see that happening with users that are using the wet function with the machine. So what's happening is if you're standing too close to the surface and that material is getting wet and it's kind of bouncing back at you, most of the time the material is getting right back up into the gun housing where the pneumatic valve and the trigger are making contact. Right where the trigger is, you can see that there is a silver pin or piston that is in the pneumatic valve with the gun. If material gets up in that gun housing, it's gonna jam that pin in place and it's just gonna continuously fire. And all you have to do to remove that or to get rid of that material is just take some clean, dry air, take a blower, and just blow up in there, make sure that it's completely clean of debris. If you do need to disassemble the gun itself, we do have a maintenance video on how to take that apart and also exchange the hose if need be. Now, if your gun isn't firing at all, it is a good idea to go through the machine and just check out the twin hoses, the red and black airline, to make sure that there's no kinks within the hose, but also the gun itself. Right here, you'll notice that we have our red and black airlines, our twin hoses that are feeding into the gun and connected to the pneumatic valve inside of the gun. We see a lot of users that tend to throw the gun over their shoulder or, you know, twist this and turn it. And basically what can happen is those twin lines, if they become loose, uh, out of those, those quick connect ports in that pneumatic valve, it'll throw the pneumatics in the machine off just a little bit. Easiest thing to do is just try, if you hear any kind of air that may be leaking, if you pull the trigger and you hear kind of like a puff or so some air escaping out of there, just firmly press those two hoses in place so that they reconnect with the pneumatic valve inside of the unit. Again, it's also a good idea to make sure that you're checking in this back plate area to make sure that all of the hoses are free of any kind of kinks, any kind of twists or knots, anything like that. If there are kinks, it will restrict the air from getting to the gun itself and it will kind of interrupt how the machine works. So you wanna make sure that there's no kinks within those twin lines in this back area here, but also at the very bottom of the unit. So that concludes our frequently asked questions video. Stay tuned for a part two. We're gonna answer a few more questions about some of our various systems as well as applications. So thank you guys very much for watching.